back to everybody for the afternoon session of the workshop on effective writing effective conference papers. This is session five. Before we begin or do anything, let me just briefly explain to you the format because we've had a number of uh, queries on the chat. This you can think of the session as a combination of a tutorial and a discussion session. So we will be leading the tutorial from here, but you will be doing some of the exercises at your end. And many of these exercises are perhaps 15 or 20 minutes long. I'll decide as, or I'll let you know as time goes on, how much time you should spend on each part of the exercise. So you will work on the exercise in pairs or, or in groups. Essentially, you need one computer for every two or three people to work on this exercise. You don't need a hard copy or a printout of the exercises. The files needed for the session have been uploaded on Moodle under assignments. There should be a folder called files for session five practical. So if you haven't done it, done so yet, could you please make sure that these files are present on every PC that the participants are using? And as and when required, I'll tell you which file to use. If you still have any queries, you can uh, perhaps type them in the chat window. Okay, so let's begin. And as uh, Professor Sunoj mentioned in his talk earlier, any coincidence to your work, your writing is entirely deliberate. And what I mean by this is one of the purposes of this workshop is to iteratively improve your papers as you heard from Prof Professor Fatak this morning. And in order to iteratively improve, you have to start somewhere. And in order to provide examples for you, I need some samples. So what I did and what Dr. Muktatre will be doing tomorrow is we, we viewed through a lot of your submissions. And I must say here that it was very encouraging to see over 400 pre-workshop submissions of your drafts. Because that's what, that, that will be what you, you will use today and tomorrow and maybe even next week to apply some of the guidelines that you learned today. So, much of the examples, much of the samples you might see are from, some, from your own writing. Do not think that it is a criticism or a judgment on your writing. And in fact, you are helping us by providing us samples so that we can all work with them and we'll all learn in that process. So at the end of today's session, okay, uh, please remain in the labs only. You have, you need a computer, you need a PC for the session. And by you, I mean every, every pair or group of participants needs to be working on a PC. So the lab is where you need to be for the entire session today. You don't have to move around. From here, I will, uh, I will say when you have to work on the PC and when you need to be listening to the presentation. And I think your coordinator can uh, help us, help you with that. Okay, let me talk a little bit more about the format and what facilities you need to have. Participants need either a laptop or a PC to work on some of the exercises, but they will be interspersed with sessions where you will need to watch the slides from here and listen to me. So ideally, you would be working in a lab which also has speakers and which has a projection screen. In the absence of that, what you can do is still work in the lab and I'm hoping that there's at least one computer in the lab which is connected to AVU, so you can use that when the session about uh, when you need to listen to me. I think most of the times you will be working on the exercises yourself, except when you have to uh, hear about the instructions as to what to do with the exercises. So I hope this helps clarify what this, how the session will be done. Again, if you have questions, please or if, uh, type it in the chat window. We'll try to sort out your difficulties. OK, so we'll right away begin with an activity, which will help you identify features of good papers. In this activity, you need to look at two papers, A and B. And these two papers are on the same topic. And in fact, they're written by the same authors except that one is a first draft and the other is a final draft. At this point beforehand, you don't know which one is which. What you need to do is first 
take your time to read both papers. Actually, I would say read one by one. So, pick up paper A and if you open paper A, what you will see is that uh, the each paragraph has been labeled as A1, A2, A3 and so on. I will try to upload it on uh, this PC also in a moment. But you will be, you should be able to see paper A, both papers are only two pages long. Each paragraph has a code associated with it. Paper A has codes which go from A1 to A9. The goal of this activity is to identify what is the purpose of each paragraph in that particular paper. You will work in groups, take about 10 minutes to read the paper and also open a file which is called activity 1 worksheet because that has a table. The table says, I will show the, the table to you in a moment, but the table says what uh, the, uh, gives you the code of the paragraph and it has a blank column for the purpose where you have to write what is the purpose of the paragraph. What I mean by purpose of the paragraph is, what is that paragraph doing for the entire paper? Is it serving, is it introducing the research questions or as we saw in the morning, is it establishing the importance of a problem? or is it describing the results. So, you should not write the content of the paragraph and especially I do not want you to summarize, but in a single sentence, please write what is the purpose of that of each paragraph. And some of the paragraphs have been worked out. So, I think the first two or three uh, paragraphs have been, uh, uh, the purpose of the first three or two or three paragraphs has been described there in the worksheet itself just to help you do the rest. So, again read paper A and fill out the corresponding part in the activity 1 worksheet. I think uh, please do this for about 10 minutes and I will interrupt again after 10 minutes. I got a number of uh, responses on the chat window and it looks like more than 15 centers, almost 20 centers have done both A and B and almost all centers have finished A. So, this would be a good time to discuss a little bit and we will discuss, then I will give you some more time for paper B and then we can, then we will see what to do after that. So, what we will look at now is what is meant by purpose of each paragraph. We will first do for paper A. You can follow along if you have done something like that. A1 and A2 had been mentioned in the worksheet itself. So, when you read the paragraphs, what you have to try to do is you have to get into the author's head because all you have is the write up. You only have what the author has written. You do not, you are not able to talk to them. You do not know what they were thinking, but you are trying to figure out what they were thinking by reading their writing. So, let us see if you were able to do it for paper A. In paragraph 1, the problem context is introduced, the importance of the problem is mentioned and I will just read out a few sentences where you will get these hints as to how you know whether uh, the problem context is introduced or how you know where the contribution is stated and so on. So, if you look at the last two sentences in paragraph A1, the second last sentence in paragraph A1 says, in this paper we focus on students interaction with the LOs, we connect students interaction with the LOs to the design features. Knowledge about this connection will help LO creators design them to be more effective for teaching and learning. So, the sentence we connect the interaction to the design features is what these authors are proposing and in fact, not just proposing, they are doing a study to determine what is the connection between students interaction with the LOs and the uh, design features of the LOs themselves. So, the contribution has been stated upfront clearly and in the first paragraph itself. The second paragraph is perhaps more explanatory. It has a lot of the related work on how to design learning objects 
It also has described what are good features in uh, learning objects as done by or as mentioned by other people in papers. In the third paper, you have to be a little careful because a lot of inf important information is packed into the third paragraph. It is a very short paragraph, but there is a lot of important information. There are two questions at the beginning of paragraph A3. This is where the problem is being stated or the research questions are being stated. Again, what I would like you to note is how clearly they are being stated and they are being stated in a question form, question 1 and question 2. Right below it in paragraph A3, this is at the bottom of the first column. It says, to answer the research questions, a qualitative study was planned involving observations of students, screen capture and video footage. Interviews were conducted and so on. So, in the last part, in this part, what the authors are telling us is the broad solution approach. They are describing their methodology, but in a broad overview fashion. They are not yet giving us details. And if you remember what we saw this morning, that first give the broad overview of the solution and only then come to details, this paper is following it. Let us now go to paragraph A4. If you look at A4, A5 and A6, all three paragraphs are still describing the methodology of the study. But if you just look at the size of the paragraphs, A3 talks about the methodology in three lines. A4 talks about the sample, that is the people in the study in an entire paragraph, almost 12 lines. A5 and A6 describe the instrumentation, the measurement process or the measurement tool in the study and A6 talks about the procedure of the experiment. So, taken together A4, A5 and A6 completely in great detail describe the methodology. They are an extension of A3 where the broad solution was simply outlined and now the details are being provided in, uh, in the paragraphs A4, A5 and A6. What I would like you to pay attention to a little bit is if you are writing about a strategy that you used in your class or if you are trying to do a research study on how much students learned because of a new technology tool. Your methodology section has to have three important aspects. One is how did you choose the people in the study? That is called the sample. Secondly, you have to say how you measured what you wanted to measure. This is called the tool or the instrument. And third, you have to describe the procedure of the experiment. So, A4, 5 and 6 are the methodology sections. Let us come to A7. In fact, let us take one step back before that. If you, take, if you look at A4, A5 and A6, the authors are not just describing their methodology or how they pick their sample, they also tell us why they chose that particular set of people or why the measurement tool that they are using is appropriate for their study. So, let us look at a few sentences from the paper. I would like you to look at the last sentence in paragraph A4. It says, we selected this group of students as we wanted to study students response to a topic not yet covered in their syllabus. So, not only do they describe who their sample is or what their sample is, they are also telling us why it is the correct sample for their research questions. And if you remember from A3, the research question was, what is the exploration procedure adopted by a student? So, they want a student who does not know about this topic and they are trying to find out how well the student is able to do a self study about this topic. Similarly, if you look at if you look at paragraph A 3 itself at the bottom, they say that 
since the questions are exploratory and need a lot of rich data to answer, observations and interviews are a suitable method. If the, the authors wanted to prove whether a teaching method was more effective than a different teaching method, they might have used a pretest and a post-test design. Instead here, they are doing observations and interviews because they want to explore how students are interacting with a new technology. Going on to A7, A7, in A7, the authors uh, talk about how they do the data analysis. What are the different categories on the basis of which they are going to analyze the data? And they follow it up with A8 with the results where they simply apply the analysis onto the data that they have. So the results in A8 have categories and the categories are called graphical user interface, response and feedback, response to assessment and feedback and conceptual understanding. These categories had already been chosen in their analysis section. One more thing you might want to make note of in the results section is that there are plenty of graphs. Finally, in paragraph A9, the purpose of paragraph A9 is to connect the results to the research questions. So, what this exercise or through this exercise, what we tried to do is to get into the authors minds and try to understand what they were trying to convey by means of their paragraph. And I hope you were also fairly successful in doing so because a lot of the clues into the author's mind is provided in the paper itself. I read out some of the sentences to you earlier, I pointed out some of the features. So when we analyze papers, especially if you are a referee or even if you are trying to understand somebody else's paper, what you need to do is try to understand what is the author trying to convey by this sentence or this paragraph. It is a good idea to go at a paragraph or a section level first because sentences are too fine grained. The resolution is not, is, is too fine. You won't be able to, usually it is a little hard to find out what the author means by individual sentences. So look at a whole section, look at a whole paragraph and see if the author's intent is clearly coming out of the writing. What we will do now is try to repeat this exercise for paper B. So I will just do a quick discussion of paper B and what you may have found is that or let us do the discussion and then I will ask you another question. Okay, paper B. In B1, the authors are describing what their project is doing. The first half of B1 is what their project is doing and the second part of B1 talks about some related work on how to design learning objects for education. Beyond that, it is a little difficult to understand what the authors were trying to say, what was their main purpose. It is a little hard to understand beyond these two sentences. B2 is reasonably clear. It says the, the B2 describes all the features of the learning objects that the authors are using in their study. B3 describes the author's research study and almost immediately they describe lot of details of how the sample was chosen and how they determined what kind of interaction students had with the learning object. So I want to point out the sentences. What they said is, well, uh, there is a sentence at the top of column 2 in B3. We kept a record of the field notes which contain details of the manner in which students navigated through the learning object, whether they easily found the icons, home, demo, quiz, glossary, whether they were able to manipulate the interactive variables and so on. So right away they tell you a lot of details about what they were looking for in their research study. And after that, there is more description of related work on the benefits of visualization. This was paragraph B4. Let us go to B5. Unfortunately, there was a typo. Uh, I am sorry about that. B5, the number B5 has been repeated twice. So I am just calling it B5 page 1 and B5 page 2. 
B5 page 1 talks a little bit about results and it talks specifically about results on how easily students are able to navigate through LOs in the entire paragraph. B5 on page 2 has bulleted points on results, but again I was not able to easily summarize what common topic the results were on. There were about 7 or 8 bullet points of results on B5 page 2 on diverse topics. The last paragraph in this paper B7 looks like a conclusion and the authors are making some strong claims in B7. For example, they are saying that it has been shown, this is the last sentence in B7, it has been shown that in many science and engineering subjects, visualizations improved student performance, collaborative learning and problem solving. So, B7 seems like some combination of a summary and conclusion. What I have for you now is a question similar to what we did in the morning. So, I am going to pose the question on this slide and I would like the participants to vote whether they, let me put the question up. Which paper did you find to be better written? Share your answer with the, your fellow RC participants and coordinator if you could please type in the majority answer in the chat window. We will do this exactly like what we did in the morning. If you do not have interactivity in your lab, I will ask you this question again when we go back to the uh, lecture hall. But I think a lot of you do have since you did already send me a lot of chat responses earlier. So, from your participants, which paper did you find to be more clearly written? Okay, let me interrupt. Majority of the answers, I would say uh, maybe 34 out of 35 say that A seems to be better written. And you would have found it to be much easier to identify the purpose of the paragraph in, paragra in uh, paper A. It was very clear in paper A that paragraph a 2 had related work, paragraph A 3 had the problem as well as a broad solution, Pro paragraph A 4 described the sample and so on. So, moreover, so the first thing we see from comparing the two papers is that in paper A, the purpose is very clearly outlined, but let us also look at a few more details. And I am not going to go through all of these right now, uh, I want to, let us do a few of them at least. If you look at problem A 1, pa uh, paragraph A 1, the problem is first motivated from a very broad picture. They start by saying what are the benefits of visualizations and then they say that in order for these benefits to actually take place one needs to have good design features in the learning objects. So, if the good design features are not there in the visualizations, all the stated benefits may not happen. And then only then the importance of the specific work is established. So, they start with a broad picture and slowly bring the reader as Professor Sunoj mentioned earlier, there is a flow to the paper from a broad picture and they are walking you through till they talk about their own specific problem. If you look at a 3, one very good characteristic there is that the research questions that the authors are trying to do is very clearly stated in the form of questions. So, a uh, big um, guideline I would say again, I am not going to call it a rule, but a very strong guideline is if you pose your problems as questions instead of statements, it is much easier for you to understand what you are trying to do and of course, it is much easier to uh, easier for the reader to understand what you were trying to do. In each of the methodology paragraphs as we saw earlier, the details are described and then they are justified. Why is, why are these students chosen for my study is justified in A4. A5 says why the measurement tools or how the measurement tools capture all the data that are needed for the study. A6 is again important look at the amount of detailing in A 6. So, I just want to take a break for 30 seconds, go back and read A 6 and ask yourself 
if you had to repeat this experiment in your college, would you be able to do so? So those of you who have the paper in front of you, you can do it right here. Okay, let us look at the result section in A8. Again, there are important features here. You heard a session by Professor Gaitonde this morning about the importance of graphics. So, if you look at the results in paper A, you will see that bar charts are used to depict the important results. So, even if the reader has not looked through some of the earlier text, they can look at your bar charts and understand what you did and what you found. There are summary bullets cl classifying the results into different categories which have already been determined. So, you do not have to wonder as to which result is trying to answer which question. And this in particular, I would like you to contrast with paper B. Paper B also has a lot of results, but in paper B the results are given as a long list. They may be true, they may be well, they may be correct and they may be well studied, but the reader does not know what to do with the results. The reader does not reader know how they answer the questions. One more thing you will notice in B, in paper B, notice or you will notice the absence is, it is not clear ever in paper B what exactly the authors are trying to do. I hope, I, I would like to encourage you to go back and Notice that this is one, this is hap, this characteristic is missing, and perhaps that is why most of you found paper B to be much harder to read. It is not badly written, the English is perfect, I would say. There is some structure to the paper. So, here is an example where the authors know their English, they have done good work, but the flow is missing, and the important sections that we talked about this morning, the important characteristics, questions are not mentioned. So, even though a lot of results are mentioned and even though the details of the study are mentioned, you find it very hard to follow paper B. Look at the methodology section in paper B and I am referring to, let us go back a couple of slides. I am referring to uh, paragraph B3. The authors start by describing their research study. They say that we did a research study consisting of eight students and the rest of the paragraph is about the students and about the measurement. What they do not tell you is what is the research study about, what they were trying to find out. So, they are violating the rule of overall idea first and details later. They do have the idea in their own minds, that is why they were able to do a study and get such good results, but they are not being, they are not clearly stating it in the paper. So, these two papers are illustrating to you some of the characteristics we saw in the morning. Let us talk a little bit about related prior work. Both papers talk about related prior work. What happens in paper A is the prior work is categorized and wh what I mean by categorized is all related work or all previous work related to design of learning objects appears in the same place. All previous work related to the gaps or, or related to the benefits of the visualizations appears together. So, there is a classification done of the re related work. This is one some form of synthesis that is happening. Secondly, the gaps in the related work have been identified, analyzed and stated. There is a sentence in paper A. Paragraph A2. It is the last sentence. 
while the design of Oscar learning objects is based on results of prior studies, we study the effect of the design and pedagogy of the objects on students in the Indian environment who are not familiar with learning by self-study. So, they are identifying what is missing in the prior studies or what gap is there, what has not been done in the prior studies and they, in the very next paragraph in A3, they are telling us how they plan to fill that gap. So, that is meant by the analysis and synthesis. This is completely missing in paper B, even though there is a lot of prior literature. So, there are two problems in the literature uh, in the previous work mentioned in paper B. Firstly, you will see pieces of it in all the paragraphs. There was B1, B4, a little bit in B2. Secondly, they mention a lot of literature on the benefits of visualizations, which are not the focus of this paper. So, there is no point talking about literature that is not related to your study. Thirdly, there is no analysis of the gaps done. So, that's. so when you do literature survey, what you need to do is the an analysis and the synthesis. So, what we will do at this point is, uh, I hope this exercise at least gave you a practical example of one, how to read a paper and analyze it and b what points to keep in mind when you are writing the paper. So, there is a summary of all the po points that we talked about. So, let us take a short break. I think uh, there should be tea in all your remote centers available. So, if not tea then take a walking break or something. Let us reconvene at uh, 420, for, let us say 425, 15 minutes and we will do two things. We will spend about 20 minutes on summarizing the characteristics of a good paper, 15 to 20 minutes since we have done it a couple of times and we will not do any more activities. I will open up the forum for discussion because we have not done any interaction today except through chat window. So, we will do a quick summary and then interaction. So, if you would like to come back to the lab and you have a view in the lab with interaction that is fine. If you do not have a view in your lab and you want to go back to your lecture hall, that is also ok because we would not be doing any more activities. So, let us uh, stop, take a break for about 15 minutes and we will come back uh, for a long interaction. Ok, welcome back to the last session of day 1 of the workshop. Before we go on, I would just like to make a quick announcement about the exercise that you just did because we have been receiving a lot of queries on where you can upload the worksheet and why Moodle is not allowing someone to upload their assignment and so on. So, there is no need to upload your worksheet. The whole purpose of the exercise was for each of you to be able to analyze papers and that is why you had two papers, one good and one let us say that could use a lot of improvement. And by reading and trying to analyze those papers, I hope you got an idea of what are the features that are required. In the next few minutes, we will do one last summary of these features, taking examples from paper A. But the worksheet that you just did, that is for your benefit. If you would like, uh, uh, you can save a copy of it on your PC or take it home and so on. There are plenty of more opportunities for you to upload worksheets and homework. So, today, today evening, before you go home, I will announce a short, a very short mini homework. And tomorrow, there will be another an announcement of a longer homework. So, if you are raring to go and upload something, hold on for a few more minutes. Well, okay, a uh, couple of more queries. There is an activity 2 in the uh, folder on Moodle. We will not be doing that right now. So, we will postpone that to tomorrow. You do not have to look at activity 2. After about a 15 minute summary, we will open up the floor to questions. We will do an interactive audio video question. So, if you would like to move your participants to the lecture hall for that, that is fine. Or if you would like to stay in the lab and you have a view in the lab, that is also ok. There is one more question on whether we will share the slides. All slides both from today and tomorrow will be shared on Moodle. It just might take a couple of more days for us to upload them on Moodle. But all slides, the, uh, even the two paper, well, you have the two papers, but the comparative table that you saw some time ago, somebody asked for it. All of these will be uploaded on Moodle as soon as possible. 
So, as we saw in the previous session, paper A does did seem a lot easier to read and we saw some of the reasons for it. So, let us do a top down summary now and now I would like you to think of these points not from the perspective of paper A or B, but from the perspective of what you should be doing when you are writing your own paper. A well written paper has or contains a focus, a clearly identified focus. The focus of paper A was that learning objects can be effectively used only if they are designed well. That was the main idea, the focus behind the entire paper. Their experiments also, the study that they did was also trying to determine how to design them well, so that they are useful in teaching and learning. They were not trying to prove anything in the study but they were trying to make a connection between effective use and good design. So, that was the single key focus in paper A. It was not about the benefits of visualizations, but it was a connection between effective use and good design. Next, key contribution of the paper clearly stated, we spoke about this in the morning and I think we also discussed this when we were looking at paper A. There is a sentence, first paragraph, last line, it is a fairly prominent position. We connect students interaction with the learning objects to the design features and in the next sentence they are telling us who would benefit from this contribution or who is the target audience for this paper. Knowledge about this connection will help creators of learning objects design them to be more effective. So, lesson for all of us writing is state your contributions clearly and put them in a place where they are easily found. The general recommendation is to put them in your introduction. First paragraph is great. If your introduction has two or three paragraphs, put them somewhere boldly in the introduction. Next point, problem clearly stated in the form of questions. So, here you saw an actual example from a real research paper which does that. What it does not say here is what not to do. Well, but you saw paper B. Paper B said we did a research study. So, a problem is not what you did, it is the questions that you would like to be answered via your paper. It is easiest to fulfill this goal to clearly state the problem if the problem is in the form of a question. Because then you can read reread your results and see if they answer this question and if they do not, you know that something is inconsistent. Maybe you have to repeat your study or maybe you have to do it with a different sample or maybe the questions you were asking were just too difficult. But the moment you have questions, the entire paper can focuses or the, the reader's attention at all times is towards the questions. It anchors the paper. Importance of the problem well explained. We again saw that this was an important feature this morning. And in paper A, there was a sentence which says that the use of learning objects can lead to effective teaching and learning only if they are designed well, they need to be pedagogically rich and so on. So, this was the key focus of the paper, but this is also why doing the study is important, why answering the questions you saw in the previous page are important. So, if we know that good design leads to better learning or more effect, I would not say better learning, if we know that good design leads to more effective use, then we better know what those good design features are. Next point, related work stated and analyzed, I think when we were looking at the tables, we saw this. What you, I would like you to focus on is how related work has been themed in this paragraph. The two themes are student use of computer simulations to engage with and explore science topics. That is one theme. Second theme is design development and use of multimedia learning objects. So, there is a clear theme. They may have read 10 papers, they may have cited 10 papers in their or 10 journal articles in their research paper, but they have all been categorized into clear themes, which again are related to the research questions because design and use of multimedia learning objects have to deal with the research questions. We did talk about analyzing the gap in the paper, that is the bottom paragraph here, that what is not present in the paper or what is not present in previous work needs to be stated clearly. 
and that's the basis of the research questions. Results are easily understandable, clear, and for scientific presentations, it usually means include tables, graphs, bar charts, scientific diagrams, flow diagrams, flow charts, block diagrams, depending on what domain you're from. So the two papers you compared had to do with the teaching and learning using technology. But these guidelines that emerge from it hold true in all papers. In fact, Professor Gaitunde spoke, uh, his entire session was on how to make diagrams more understandable. So I don't have to talk to you about the importance of this. Again, if you want a, an example of a bad, if you want a bad example, think of paper B. Lots of results, but not clearly understandable. Solution, explain it with overall idea first and details later. So in paper A, paragraph A3, explain the overall idea. That A study was planned, it involved observations, screen capture and video, and why this study is suitable for the research problems. That's all it says in the overall idea. That's sufficient. The details were the sample tool and procedure, one large, fairly large paragraph each. Solutions were not just described and explained, they were also defended. And what defense means is, firstly, Good results are a good uh, provide a fairly valid justification for the solution approach or for the idea that you have that you think would solve the problem. So results are clearly shown, but not just that, they are reconnected to the problem. It's closing the feedback loop that you pose a problem, you suggest how to solve it, you solve it and get results, and now you show that, hey, look, the results actually indeed solve the problem that I had posed a few paragraphs ago. I think this appears in the last paragraph of paper A, that students navigated through the learning object on their own accord without, an, uh, without following any particular order and shifted between the various sections of the object. And somewhere else in the paper, it was written that these were the design features that were incorporated in the learning object, that students were given the opportunity to go back and forth between the different sections. So here they're saying that the results seem to confirm. It's preliminary evidence still. They're not making, they're not proving anything, but they're finding a pattern or a connection between students' behavior and the intended design features of their learning objects. So after you write your results, usually you will write a section. You may title it discussion, or you may just simply call it results and discussion. It's the part that comes along with and right after the results, where you have to make sense of the results. You have to say, why are the results important? How do they reconnect to the problem? That's how you will defend your solution. Okay, uh, what I would like you to do is, or what I will do for you, is go back to the table for a moment. Let's look at paper A and simply look at the purpose. And now, Please concentrate on the order, because so far we know what is inside each section. Now let's just look at the order and the sequence. Problem context introduced, importance mentioned, contribution stated, related work, broad solution, then details of solutions in A4, A5, A6. A7 is data analysis, A8 is results, 9 is connect results to research questions. So what paper? this paper A is doing, in addition to the other characteristics, is having a coherent, the sh consistent and mainly it has a coherent flow which contains all of these. I'm not saying that this is the only order you have to follow, but whatever the flow is, it has to be coherent. One violation of the coherence as we saw earlier is if you give a lot of details first and don't describe the overall idea. Another violation is if you don't talk about the problem at all, the research question, and jump into the answer, that would break the coherence in the flow. So that's about it for what are the aspects of a well-written paper. And I think we've had several activities and several sessions where we've talked about it. 
what we will do tomorrow is now see how to take an idea of some some problem some idea that you have and I'll, I'll describe how we can do it and convert it into a research article and when we do it we have to make sure that all these features are present in the process we can also talk a little bit about what are the different sections that must be there in the paper and so on but it doesn't really matter to the referee what you call the section whether you have a separate section called discussion or merge it with results or whether you have a bold title called methodology but what the referee is looking for are all these features so let me mention to you the as i had promised mention to you the homework that i would like you to think about today so today's is a really short homework so give me a moment okay homework and another announcement so what next tomorrow we will discuss how to convert just forget the word template right now but how, how to convert an idea of your idea coming from your work into a research article and how to section it out and so on how to organize the paper so i want to make a quick digression it seems like a digression right now but you'll see how it's connected to what we've been talking so far i did mention this in the morning briefly that there is a conference coming up on technology for education and the reason i'm talking about that conference specifically is the the aspect that connects all of you together is that you're all teachers so even though you're from different domains teaching is the common thread that runs through all of you so many of you would have at some point either come up with an innovative teaching learning strategy or you've implemented some new tool in your class or found out a new way to use a technology there if you are if you are able to convert it i i won't say convert it but if you think that there is some research you could do around that idea use this workshop as an opportunity to write up a research article and submit it to the conference called technology for education so a couple of slides on it uh, the conference is in july it's in hyderabad the submission deadline is somewhat close but if you already have an idea to begin with we can see if we can do something the main goal of the conference is to promote learning and teaching through the use of technology and what the conference organizers and the chairs want to do is to encourage students teachers and researchers to present results of their r&d efforts in education through the use of technology so you see here education is coming first technology is coming next but the two go hand in hand there are several areas of focus if you go to this website you'll be able to find it it's being hosted at triple it hyderabad but there is a national and international program committee this is the fourth in the series of such conferences perhaps some of you have already attended the ones earlier the next slide is interesting because how you can participate is by submitting a paper but i thought some of you would be asking the question why should i submit a paper apart from those i'll get a bullet point on my resume and i'll gain recognition you know those choices we throw throughout this morning apart from it why should you be submitting a paper again we talked about this today morning that you can get to practice your technical writing skills and apply the guidelines that you learned or that you refined in this workshop in the workshop we can only do short exercises writing a real research article will give you practice in a real life scenario it will help you get clarity in your own research and you can get to communicate your work with your colleagues and the opposite of that you can get to find out what work your fellow teachers and researchers are doing maybe you'll pick up tips on what other teachers are doing in their classes so how do you go about doing this the first thing you need to do is the homework so today's homework is very short even though it looks like it's one page long think of one innovative innovative teaching learning strategy you have used as i said earlier it can be a strategy you implemented in a large class or maybe a group based learning solution for problem solving or you may have used moodle in a very novel way in your class and you want to ask what is this doing how is it affecting students learning or students perceptions 
Is it changing teaching practices in any way? So at this point, I'm not asking you to think of any questions. All I want you to think of is one innovative teaching strategy that you've used. I'm going to call that as your idea. Write this idea in no more than two or three sentences. One sentence is sufficient in your notebook, but please write it out and bring it tomorrow. And then we'll see if we can use it to, how to use that into and try to see what research study you can uh, plan around it. So with that, I think let's uh, conclude the lecture part of the session.